yeah hi good evening back here with uh, one more mind map related to a very important bacteria okay that is h pyrrole so coming to the description of it uh, anatomically it's a gram positive you can see it is spiral rod like shape you can see uh, it's spirally it's like rod like shape and flagella are present towards one end okay it is motile because of presence of a bunch of flagella on one side that is lobotrichus and the flagella contains 5 to 7 sheeted polar flagella it is micro aerophilic catalyzed positive oxidase positive h2s positive phosphatase positive and the most important question for you in the case based as well as in a in a normal direct <coughs> clinical question is rapid urease test which is very unique for this particular bacteria there are few other bacteria which are mainly concerned with this uh, rapid urease test but out of which the most powerful is h pyrrole if you want you can make a note of other bacteria one of the most commonly asked question is rapid urease test is positive for h pyrrole which is 100 times more active than any other bacteria and the second bacteria which exhibits it is proteus okay and uh, other bacteria which <coughs> exhibit it is citrobacter so all these bacteria have the property of exhibiting this uh, urease test but the most active and most powerful is h pyrrole okay so apart from that uh, uh, it is most commonly habitated in your gastric mucosa and the most common site of occurrence of multiple colonies is gastric antrum okay so so basically the points to be added are uh, initially this this particular bacteria will enter into the body after an incubation period it is going to cause mild gastritis mild acute gastritis so uh, and it lasts for about like 2 weeks and in uh, most of the cases uh, the infection still persists and it goes on okay it goes on years and it goes on decades uh, but the patient will remain remain asymptomatic so such cases are called as chronic superficial gastritis okay so uh, if you see the histological examination of these patients who are suffering from this chronic superficial gastritis the bacteria will invade or will be presenting in only the the mucosa okay and it does not invade the underlying structures in it and bacteria has this adaptation of maintaining or survival because you know ph of stomach is somewhere around 1 to 2 which is again a most common question in your physiology so even at this low ph levels that acidic ph levels the bacteria has a habit of its survivability uh, by doing some modifications so apart from this uh, the most important points to be noted is about uh, the virulency of the bacteria okay so coming to the virulency of uh, the bacteria uh, you need to make a note about one virulent factor that is that is vacuolating cytotoxin <laughs> which is also called as vaca and this is the main this is mainly associated with causing the peptic ulcer so this organism this h pyrrole is the main concerned organism for causing this peptic ulcer <laughs> for causing this peptic ulcer so coming to the description of this peptic ulcer the peptic ulcers can be either duodenum ulcers or gastric ulcers but mostly it causes duodenum ulcers duodenum ulcers in about 80% of the cases and uh, in only 60% of the cases it's going to cause the gastric ulcer so please make a note it's a most common organism associated with the duodenum ulcer followed by the gastric ulcer and in very few cases it, it it also causes atrophic gastritis and gastric adenoma okay it's going to cause atrophic gastritis and gastric adenoma 
and coming to the inflammatory mediators or pro inflammatory cytokines which plays a very important role in occurrence of the peptic ulcer associated with this bacteria is interleukin 1 beta so this is again a very important point interleukin 1 beta is mainly concerned with causing this peptic ulcers in association with these bacteria okay so uh, so the next important points to be added is about the laboratory tests so we already discussed that uh, rapid urease test is the most convenience test okay so you have this rapid urease test is the most convenience test and uh, labeled that is either c13 or c14 okay the same test either c13 or c14 urease breath test okay so c13 or c14 urease breath test is the most accurate test okay so this is most accurate test and this is most convenient test okay so these are the two tests that you have to make a note okay so of uh, two tests that you have to make a note and uh, uh, culture culture techniques or isolation of bacteria is again a most commonly used uh, you can use the stool antigen test also and of course you can have a serological tests by identifying the virulency or by the using elisa okay elisa or any of these can be used as a serological test which are not that important so most of your questions will move around these two tests okay how we are clear up until now so i'll be talking about the treatment plan here because this treatment plan is is uh, a most commonly asked area in your pharmacology the treatment plan i hope you remember the triple drug therapy for peptic ulcer <laughs> what we have learned in our second year pharmacology part okay so uh, the triple drug therapy uh, includes different treatments that is one is the first line treatment the first line treatment uh, includes two parts one is the isiman 1 and the two the one is called as oca which is used for 7 to 14 days and the second one is ocm which is used again for 7 to 14 days so oca in which o means omeprazole c is calithromycin and a is amoxicillin and o for omeprazole calithromycin and metronidazole so these are the two combinations which are used as first line drugs so this is called as triple drug therapy and uh, the second line again includes one more rism that is rism third that is rism in third which includes obtm which is used for two weeks okay this obtm which includes omeprazole b for a heavy metal that is bismuth t for tetracycline and m for other metronidazole okay so uh, this is uh, the main important points related to this particular type of bacteria so apart from this you can make a note that this h pyrola is usually acquired in children okay as age increases the prevalence of occurrence of these organism increases and coming to uh, the reservoirs and humans are the only reservoirs for this particular bacteria and uh, there is a study that is clearly showing that man to man transmission is by the fecal oral or oro fecal route the source of infection is the gastric mucosa only as already discussed it is most commonly associated with the fecal oral similar fecal oral so it is most commonly seen with uh, children most commonly seen with low socio economic status people and most commonly seen with a poor oral hygiene or are crowded areas where the food or uh, any of any of these things were easily get uh, polluted okay so this is how uh, this bacteria will cause infection and